Okay, so I'm Mark Solomon. Um, I'm a research council officer at the National Research Council in Canada, uh, in Edmonton, Alberta. And so we work on, um, we specialize in electron microscopy here, among other things. And um, so this team that has built the NanoMe is um, fairly extensive. We have a bunch of people. Um, Ray Edgerton um, is a pioneer in electron energy loss spectroscopy. Um, and the person who came up with this idea, idea uh, Merrick Malik, is um, studied under Ray and uh, set up the whole electron microscopy uh, suite here at Nano Edmonton. And so the rest of the team, a bunch of engineers and students that we employ to, um, to work on this uh, system. And so what it is, it's a platform for open source electron microscopy. We want people to be able to build their own uh, electron microscopes. Um, so nano me, you can see there the Japanese kanji, uh, me stands for beauty. And of course, nano is 10 to the minus nine. So beauty at the nano scale is what we're shooting for. Now, our objectives with the nano me, we want to be able to uh, people to build an affordable uh, scanning electron microscope, transmission electron microscope, scanning transmission electron microscope, or FIB. And you ask, well, how can you do all this from the same platform? So what we're using is electrostatic lenses, and you can use those on ions as well as electrons. So that's why we can do um, focused ion beam. And um, it it allows us some unique things, as you'll see a little bit later in the talk. Uh, it, it provides you an electron and optical test bench uh, where you can do proof of principle experiments. We're going to be using it to try and entangle electrons and photons. You can do some unique quantum experiments. And we've built it. Uh, my background is in building ultra high vacuum. So everything that we've built is all ultra high vacuum compatible. So it could be added to any existing apparatus that you might have. And kind of the overriding objective is to build up this community um, of electron microscopy expertise um, that, you know, can inform each other and help each other. And um, so we want to make these plans available so that people can experiment on their own. And it just builds up this level of expertise in the community and allows others to, to experiment by, you know, standing on the shoulders of, of work that other people have done. So. So as I said, um, we're using electrostatic lenses. Um, it makes it fairly simple for um, building. Um, we're shooting for a modest 50 kilovolt accelerating voltage. Um, perfectly good for bio and, and a bunch of things, 10 nanometer resolution. So we're not, you know, we're not here to compete with the electron manufacturers. Um, uh, what we want to do is offer kind of a unique tool set. Um, and as I said, it's all UHV compatible. So we figure that for about 50K in materials um, and a year of student time, you could build it. Um, I guess that kind of depends on your machining costs, whether you could do your own machining. So we have um, available the CAD blueprints that a standard machine shop can build. Not, not crazy tolerances, plus or minus, um, um, 0 0.02 millimeters or plus or minus a thousandth of an inch. Unfortunately, we, um, our neighbor, the U.S., uh, is all standard. And so buying materials, often you end up buying in standard. So a lot of our um, uh, drawings are in uh, inches. And I think probably South America is probably metric, I think. So um, I'm not, I'm not sure, but. Um, yeah, I think mostly the rest of the world, yeah. Inches yeah. Are not so I mean, well, yeah, well, we'll, <laughs> but we'll I get understand. There. That's the local ecosystem. <laughs> yeah, it's just buying parts sometimes is 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 hard to buy in in metric. So, but anyways, that's that's an easy adjustment to make, and all our software is in Python. Uh, CAD drawings for electrical hardware and circuit boards. Uh, we've done that all in KiCad, so that's an open source and free software, and then. Um, Python, of course, is, you know, um, free and open source. And then in terms of CAD blueprints for the mechanical components, 
Um, we've, we've done it all um, with STP files, so you can use any uh, FreeCAD. So for example, there's uh, a CAD system called FreeCAD and um, that works perfectly fine. So, so this is um, a picture of our setup in the lab currently. And so what we've done is built it in a very modular fashion. So it, um, we've taken a half pipe, we've just taken a tube, we've cut it in half. And then we, uh, you can see there's um, our components and they, they all slide into this half pipe. And then they, they connect with three tubes um, in, inside the chamber to align it. So the, the components you can move around, it's very modular. You can set up a very custom experiment. Um, in terms of detection, um, what we use is just a standard off-the-shelf camera with a phosphorescent screen. Um, and then we built our own STEM detector. Um, for an SEM detector, you can build your own. We just um, put our own Everhart Thornley um, detector in that we had off the shelf, but th those are fairly simple to build. Build all our own uh, electronics here. So you can see we have piezo movers, um, lens power supplies. Currently, we're just using commercial ones, but those can all be built. And then what we use is a turbo molecular pump. Uh, so that's what we're using for vacuum, um, where you can bake the system. And um, we're shooting for about like 10 to the minus 10 torr. Um, and then just standard off the shelf uh, high voltage feed throughs. So one of the ways that we're able to make this uh, fairly simple is we use um, a little piezo mover. And so that's something that I've built for uh, other research groups to do um, getting tunneling microscopy. And it's, um, it's kind of unique in that it can move over distances of 10 millimeters or longer, but you can take 20 nanometer steps. So it's very accurate. And the nice thing is, is you can just feed wires in to the chamber. So it's very simple, like rather than having uh, mechanical feed throughs to align um, uh, apertures or uh, lenses and stuff like that. Um, what we do is we, we just have these piezo motors to align our apertures and samples. And then um, we just use deflectors to um, electrically align the rest of the column. And so you can see what we've done here um, is we've just we have room for nine samples right now. And, um, you know, so you can put your nine samples in. We haven't developed a load lock system like most typical um, commercial EMs or microscopes, but um, that could easily be designed as well. So here's uh, some of the components. Uh, on the right, we have our lenses. So it's, you know, we've worked out the physics. It's a very simple lens. It has um, uh, a plate in the middle that you apply your voltage to and then grounded caps. And, um, you know, we've just worked out all the distances and um, tested it. And then there's an insulator, of course, separating the two. And then we have an asymmetric lens for um, once you get close to the sample where you want your lens to be as close to the sample as possible. And then uh, we've developed um, double plate deflectors so that you can do a, a symmetric deflection or sorry, a parallel deflection. And then um, stigmators um, to shape the beam. And so we've developed our own scan control unit from scratch using an FPGA. Um, I think uh, this is not quite the most current version but it will all be housed in one box. Um, and of course, the scan control unit could be used for all sorts of different things, actually, not, not just electron microscopy, but scan probe microscopy. Um, so it, a lot of these parts are, you know, useful for all kinds of different things. And so, yeah, we, we use a Spartan 7 FPGA, do it all from scratch, and the, all that information is available. And so in terms of detectors, um, there's a vast array of detectors that can be made. So in this iteration, we just built our own Faraday cup. Um, and that with that, you can just uh, determine your beam current. And then for our STEM, <clears throat> we have um, a photodiode and a scintillator so that we can uh, do STEM. 
So this is just an example of a little bit more um, simplification. So we have our eight plate stig meter and you know, and eventually you may want to individually control the voltage to each plate, but we just have inverting and non-inverting um, wiring so that it, it's, it simplifies the system and you can use it to, to shape your beam. But you can always go more complex later. And here, this is just um, an example of the, the software system. So we have a hub and then all these just various modules. So if you're doing SEM, you know, you have SEM panning and mag and acquisition. And if you're doing TM, uh, you know, of course we have our stig meter and deflectors mm -hmm. and then um, the actual imaging. So um, yeah, and so this obviously is uh, very modular and can be added to at will for any kind of, you know, module that you want to add. Now, the, the fun part about this is we make this available for people and we want the community to build on it. But it's also a tool for us to um, advance some of our science. So what we've done is we've um, flipped our column, made it horizontal. We just uh, have a big V groove. And as you can see, we just placed our components in the V groove and we put it on an optical bench. Um, so we have a collaboration with um, a University of Alberta professor, Dr. Frank Higman, who's um, one of the founders of uh, terahertz microscopy. And there's some really unique things you can do uh, with terahertz. So not only can you do ultra fast, you can do a pump probe uh, type of experiment where you can do ultra fast imaging, but the terahertz, um, because it's so fast, um, it has very high fields. And so you could take like a very modest 50 kilovolt source and you could accelerate those electrons up to, you know, much higher velocities. And so, you could take a relatively simple system and turn it into a much higher end um, or a much more powerful uh, electron beam, which has all kinds of unique advantages. And of course, this allows you to do um, some unique experiments. Um, like, like I was saying, we want to entangle electrons and photons. And um, yeah, it just, it's, um, it's a toolbox of you know, things that you can do further experiments on. So that's, it's exciting for us as well to use for our own purposes. So in conjunction with the control software, we've also done um, software just for visualizing the beam. So, you know, we can place our different components and we can do live um, kind of uh, simulation of what the beam should look like. And, and this is very helpful. I think sometimes for people, uh, when they use a TM, it's a big black box and they don't really know what's going on inside. And this is a tool to kind of help you visualize and understand what's happening, um, just so that you have a real uh, understanding of the physics behind it. Uh, this can all be downloaded like right away. You could just go click on GitHub here and um, download it. So. So as of Today, um, you know, we've built all these individual components. We've integrated them into an initial SEM and EM column and, and done some initial imaging. Um, you know, we've, we've kind of set up these interface parameters for how um, uh, kind of an architecture that we think works well uh, that people could build on. Um, you can see our electronics. We've gone from you know, our very initial prototype, and it's become a lot more professional as we moved along and um, software as well. Um, so we, we've demonstrated uh, SEM, TM, STEM, and electron diffraction. Um, we've built our second scan control unit. And of course, um, safety, something not to be overlooked, um, continuously evaluating um, the safety. Of course, it's very easy to produce X-rays, and um, these are things you just need to be very aware of if you do end up building your own column. So th this is just a kind of a map of the whole um, uh, component interface. 
And as you can see, we do definitely use commercial parts right now. Um, so the fun thing is that people could, um, maybe they wouldn't build a whole system, but maybe they want to be involved in the project and they could jump in and say, well, you know, we'd really like to work on building our, an electron gun. And so that it's, it's very modular in that sense that people could be part of the project and even use it for their own purposes. You might not need an electron gun to build a TM. You might want to use an electron gun for something entirely different, but that still doesn't mean that you can't be part of the project. And then, of course, you, like our custom parts, we're, we're working more and more to build like all of our own stuff. But a lot of stuff, of course, is easy to buy commercially. For example, a digital camera, and those are cheap and available. Um, vacuum pumps. We're not about to start building our own vacuum pumps. And we use um, like just standard conflat flanges. Um, so we just buy like a lot of the, the vacuum chamber envelope. And, um, you know, we work on the, the parts that we think are most important to work on at, at this stage. And we're using um, like a Linux uh, PC to control everything. So it's one PC that does all the control. Also, just a couple um, initial images. Nothing crazy at this point. We we'll, we've only you know done a couple lenses in the system. Um, so this is just a quantifoil mesh grid. And then we've done an SEM image. We just took some um, carbon coated dandelion parachutes just to show that it's um, you know we can get images. We haven't done any stigmation yet or cleaning up the beam in that way. Uh, we've also done electron diffraction on a 10 nanometer uh, gold single crystal. That's just um, with a single post specimen lens. Um, yeah, just to show that it can be done. And then, of course, um, you know we're we're not going to uh, get notoriety by doing you know very simple experiments. So what we do is very unique experiments. So this is one where we've worked with our uh, some Japanese partners and we're working on doing Lorentz imaging. So what we do is we take um, this um, mesh grid and then we um, epoxy a tiny wire above it and so it can charge and then we can, we can do Lorentz imaging. So if you're interested in that, the method is described here in microscopy. So we need to look for these kind of niche, uh, unique experiments um, that will um, show, um, yeah, sort of the ability of the microscope and being able to customize it, of course, is the one of the biggest advantages. So you can, you know, uh, people don't want to take their million dollar microscope and modify it, or they're probably not even allowed to if it's under service contract. But here, of course, you know, there's no service contract that you're paying for annually and you can modify it in any way that you like so you can do very unique things so the way um the the license works is what or the principles behind the license is we we really just want to ensure that we have ongoing open access we don't want somebody to to take it all and you know just Kind of put it under lock and key so we want to make sure that it's got that it stays open um we want to make sure that the background ip of people who use it isn't affected and we actually want people to use it commercially um so but but still not affecting the background ip so you can imagine a company could take these plans and go well we're gonna you know, we're going to make an aberration corrected microscope or something and build on this. And that's great. That's fine. Um, it, it, we want people to, to use it as a base um, to to produce uh, things that they want and be able to sell them. And then we want to ensure that like the, the core nanomy components that you improve or update, that that um, that update kind of flows back to the open source realm. So it continues to be improved within the community. So who, who can participate and how? So right now, um, we're, we're not allowed to share with individuals, but we can share with any academic institution or companies. Um, so from NRC trusted countries, and there's an agreement to sign. It's a very 
uh, simple agreement and all it, it says, uh, essentially, if you boil it down, is that um, we would like you to contribute back. And um, so this um, link here will take you to a blueprint request form, and then we can um, send you the agreement. The software is currently available to anybody. So we're on um, OSF. It's here at this link. Uh, you can watch for updates at this website, nanome.org. Um, if you just Google nanome, you'll you'll find a couple of web pages. There's a government web page, and then there's also this web page that we've set up. And you can definitely email me with with questions um, at any time. So with that, uh, thank you for hearing my presentation. I'm open to any questions. Thank you so much. That's absolutely fascinating. That was that was uh, even exceeding my high expectations I had for your talk. <laughs> it's a really awesome system. It's also um, even more low cost than I imagined. So thank you very much for your for your presentation. Also to telling us how to get involved. Um, I think it's fantastic that you're trying to build a community. We always say the same. I mean, if you share these designs, the community doesn't form on its own. So it's very good to to have that in mind and and hopefully through that really get to crowdsource designs that are even better. So I'm I'm very much looking forward to seeing this grow and maybe even get in touch myself with some colleagues and <laughs> try to build a fib or something like this would be fantastic. Uh, we'll see yeah. what, what comes along. So thank cool. you very much for taking the time to share this exciting project with us, Mark. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks, Tobias.